Dear brothers and sisters, my friends and family, to all who will hear my words, I am sounding the trumpet of warning. I am sounding the alarm of warning of what is soon coming upon the world, the judgment of God. I am giving this warning to you because I love you. I hope for the best for you. I care for you, and I do not want to see you suffer or perish. I want to see you grow and prosper, to come into life abundantly. I want you to know the truth and to ready yourself. Not the wisdom and truth of this world, but the true wisdom and knowledge. This is the truth of the Lord God Almighty. The word of the Bible is true, and the days in which we are living in are the last days. Those end days prophesied thousands of years ago in the Holy Bible. I believe the days in which we are living in. We are on the verge of great chaos and evil in this world and the great tribulation, a time of great difficulty for mankind, unlike anything that has ever been. Before the return of our Lord and God, the Messiah and Saviour of mankind, Lord Jesus Christ, who is one with God the Father and the Holy Spirit, he shall judge this world and all of its inhabitants, and shall return to reign on the earth as Lord and King. Before he returns to reign as King, the world will undergo incredible tribulation, which is the judgment of God upon the world for rejecting him, turning from the truth of his word, and doing evil and wickedness. I believe tribulation is absolutely upon us. I believe the judgment of God upon all the nations of this world is shortly at hand. It is so close that I believe that it is imminent. I don't know exactly when things will happen, but once they begin, we will see days of chaos and disaster unlike anything that has ever been on the earth. You may not have faith in Jesus Christ, but hear me out. For in this video, that I have tried to keep relatively short, I will give you a critical summary of what the Bible warns is coming, and my own personal advice and warnings I believe are supported by the Word of God, and what I believe is important information for the coming times. I would be very blessed if you would hear me out and watch this entire video. I have prepared this information with all of my efforts, knowledge, and all of my love and hope for you. You do not have to agree with me. Some of the things I will talk about may sound confronting or strange to you. But I am trying to communicate important areas of the Word of God, of what is coming, and they are vital to understand. Please hear the warnings I am giving you with an open mind and heart, and remember what I say to you. Very soon I believe we may no longer have these methods of communication, so please heed my words and keep them with you. As this is a summary, I will be displaying most of the scripture on screen. You may need to pause to read if you would like to. We are on the verge of a devastating world war, economic collapse, the emergence of a world government run by the Antichrist, who is called the Beast. This is a demon-possessed man who becomes a world ruler and is worshipped by the world. He will make war against the saints of God, those true believers in Jesus Christ persecuting them and overcoming them, many being killed and beheaded, as we are told in the word. He will rule his world kingdom for three and a half years before the return of Jesus Christ. He will likely have a very charismatic and appealing manner. He receives his authority from the dragon, who is Satan, and will gain power likely after the coming war and financial collapse. The beast is the Antichrist because he is evil and represents the opposite of Christ. He will be worshipped by the world and will speak pompous words and declare himself as God. He is said to bring a supposed time of peace, but this is shortly lived. And he brings about the abomination of desolation, which is a sign of great judgment to follow. The word tells us he will seek to change the times and laws, and he is also called the son of perdition, which is eternal judgment. He will be attested to by a false prophet who works signs and wonders, including bringing fire down from the sky, and cause the world to worship after the Antichrist beast. These events are all prophesied in the Bible, in the final chapter, the revelation of Jesus Christ, and I strongly believe these events are soon to come to pass, as the Word of God states. The Antichrist beast, the false prophet and the dragon, who is Satan, are demonic, and 
seek to lead the world away from the true living God, so that their souls are destroyed in hell, the lake of fire. We are told in the word that Jesus, by Jesus, that Satan is the ruler of the world. He is leading the world away from the Lord our God, who is Jesus Christ, one with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. This is the true nature of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Almighty God created all things and made the heavens and the earth. Mankind has by and large rebelled against God, following Satan instead of the Lord's truth, though many do not realize they are following Satan to their eternal deaths. In these coming days, the long-planned kingdom of Satan will emerge into the open, for he, the Antichrist beast, and the false prophet will lead the world into great darkness and eternal separation from God. This is achieved by turning the world against Jesus Christ, the only Saviour, and the Word of God, the Holy Bible, leading mankind to die in their sins without obtaining salvation. Satan will also bring about a means of eternal separation from God, even for believers, if they accept what we are warned about in the Word as the mark of the beast, or if they worship the beast and his image. The mark of the beast is a human brand on the right hand or forehead and is very likely an RFID, electronic microchip, or an electronic tattoo. Many believers in Christ have had dreams warning of this. We are told in the Word that the mark of the beast will be instituted for all in the world, for rich and for poor, for free and for slave, and without the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name, which is triple six, you will be unable to buy or sell in the New World Trade system. Those who do not take the mark of the beast, or worship the beast or his image, will be killed. It says in the word, the image of the beast will be given life and will speak. For those who accept the mark of the beast and worship the beast, we are told this is most of the world and its people. Even many believers will worship the beast and accept the mark for fear of death, or their trust in the Antichrist beast or for their desire to buy and sell in the world trade system. We are warned clearly and profoundly in the word at the Revelation 14, 9 to 12. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast in his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So you must not accept the mark of the beast. Likely an RFID, injectable microchip in the right hand or electronic tattoo, or a brand on the forehead. This mark may be voluntary at first, but will quickly become mandatory, and whoever does not accept it will be ordered to be killed. We must also not worship the beast, Antichrist, or his image. Remember this. It is better to die in the flesh than to worship the beast or receive his mark. Being separated from God with no way back, to burn in hellfire forever and ever. This is the consequence, as we are warned clearly in the Word. Know and understand this, be warned. We are told in the Word we must not deny the name of Jesus Christ, or He will deny us, and that faith in Him is the only way to salvation for our souls. If we accept the mark or worship the beast, we signal our denial of our Lord and God forevermore. And this is a fatal, soul-condemning decision. We must hold fast to our Lord Jesus Christ and not deny his name and refuse to receive the mark of the beast or worship the beast in his image. Jesus tells us at Matthew 16, 25, For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. This verse is directly applicable to the mark of the beast that will soon be implemented. For if we accept the mark of the beast or worship the beast in his image, desiring to save our lives or desiring to buy and sell in the New World Trade System for fear of starvation, persecution or death in the flesh, we will lose our souls forever. 
If, however, we seek to lose our lives for the sake of Jesus Christ, and do not deny His name, we will gain our lives forevermore with God, His salvation and eternal life for our souls, even if we die in the flesh. It is important to know that the mark of the beast is voluntary. They can scare you and put you in fear, imprison you, threaten you, and kill you, but they cannot force you to take the mark of the beast or worship the beast in his image. This is your personal choice and leads to eternal rejection from God. So this is a voluntary decision. Understand this. If you take the mark, your soul will experience spiritual death and be condemned to hell, to be tormented in hellfire forever. I am strongly warning you to never accept the mark of the beast, likely the RFID injection microchip or electronic tattoo, and never worship the beast or his image. To do either is eternal separation from God and spiritual death. This will be a great test as without the mark of the beast, you will be unable to buy and sell in the new world economic system. You will not be able to purchase food and water as this will require the mark of the beast, RFID or electronic tattoo, or for you to worship the beast and his moving image. We know this is the requirement warned in the Bible for the new economic system with the Antichrist beast. We have learned that this system is very likely a new digital-only currency system to be implemented after the coming economic collapse, and I believe this will be using the blockchain technology of the cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, so it can form the basis of the new world digital currency using the mark of the beast. The new system of the devil is here and awaiting to be implemented. So I warn you of vital importance to never accept the mark of the beast or worship the beast in his image. Never, ever, neither you, nor your family, nor your friends, nor anyone. Tell all who will hear you now. Now this mark is going to be implemented potentially quickly when war and chaos arises. Satan has been planning his destruction of Christians especially, and much of mankind in his rise to outward, to his outward world empire for a long time. He has only been able to do as much as he desires as part of the Lord's judgment upon mankind for their rejection of him our Saviour and God, Jesus Christ, who is one with God the Father and the Holy Spirit, for rejecting His word, His ways, and His commandments, and choosing to follow Satan instead. I will discuss more on this, repentance and the gospel of Jesus Christ, shortly. I have had dreams of tsunamis and natural disasters, world war, societal chaos and lawlessness, a nuclear strike on the United States, a huge tsunami striking New York City. Invasion of the United States by Russia and Asian troops. Demons coming upon the earth and other dreams. You can see my videos on the dreams that I have had. These things are spoken of in the word of God. What is coming upon the earth? I have shared them on YouTube because I believe they are warnings of what is coming. I have dreamed of foreign troops and military police rounding up people for extermination and for imprisonment into prison camps. I have dreamed of soldiers in military vehicles and soldiers in large transport buses armed with automatic rifles coming to round up people for imprisonment. In one dream, they came suddenly when the power went out everywhere and came to take people away in buses. In this dream, I believe I heard the voice of the Lord tell me, first, they will turn off the power, then they will come for the people. Then the power went off in the dream, and the buses with soldiers appeared. I knew to run and flee. I had got the strong and profound warning to avoid the buses. Do not go on them under any circumstances. They may offer you help. They may say they are relocating you to safety. Do not believe them. Do not go with them, and flee for your life, trusting in God to guide you. Whatever FEMA camp, government camp, sports stadium, or holding center they take you, They will never intend to let you out unless you accept the mark of the beast. Those who refuse the mark will be killed. We are warned in the word that believers in Christ will be hated by all nations and delivered up to be killed. So I believe Christians will be targets in these times for imprisonment. I believe attempts will be made to give 
all the mark of the beast, and Christians will be targeted especially, also to try to get them to renounce Jesus Christ. We must all refuse the mark of the beast, and refuse to deny Jesus Christ. It is better to die in the flesh, and to have your soul live forevermore with God and your true family. If you are taken on these buses and face the choice of taking the mark of the beast, RFID chip, or electronic tattoo, or if they try to get you to renounce Jesus Christ, hold fast and deny the mark and refuse to deny Jesus Christ at all costs. Be strong and courageous. Believe in the truth of the word. I have dreamed of potentially needing to be ready to flee at a moment's notice, even with nothing into the wilderness, trusting fully in God, not following and going with the government if they seek to take you, or relocate you in the coming times of crisis, in the world war and devastation that is coming, the tribulation that I believe is absolutely upon us. It is critical that you do not go with the flow when these things happen, but pray to Jesus and put your trust in him entirely, following his every guide, his every direction, his every command. Trust in God entirely for your provision, even if this means fleeing into the wilderness. Follow the guidance of the Lord at all times, who, if we believe in him and turn from our sins, we receive the Holy Spirit of God that will guide us and can teach us all things. Do not be afraid. Trust in God. Believe in Jesus Christ and turn from your sins confessing them to Jesus and you will receive forgiveness for your sins against God and the Holy Spirit of God will reside in you and will help you to overcome sin and fully turn away from it. The Holy Spirit of God will guide you in your life. This is so vital to have faith in Jesus Christ for without it you do not have life for your soul. I absolutely believe these times of world war, economic collapse, and the great tribulation, unlike anything the world has ever seen, are upon us. Heed my warnings to avoid troops, avoid the roundup buses, and never accept the mark of the beast. This will be happening all across the world. Trust in Jesus, follow his guide through his Holy Spirit, put your trust and faith in God, and follow his every guidance and command. Dark days are absolutely upon us. I cannot stress this enough. God's judgment is here. Repent and be saved. The war and economic collapse that I mentioned, which I believe is absolutely imminent, is described in the first four seals of the judgment of God in the book of Revelation, in the final chapter detailing what is to come. If you want to see more information of the many signs of World War, World War III, then see my video on World War III being upon us. As a result of the soon-to-be war, economic collapse and famine over one-fourth of the earth, a huge number of people will perish. The word of God is true, and God does not lie. So this is certainly coming, and I am telling you with every fiber of my being, all of my soul, that these days are upon us and we have such little time left. The judgment of God upon the world is here. After these things, the sun turns black and the moon blood, and the stars from heaven fall, and we have a huge, worldwide earthquake, so great that every island and mountain is moved out of its place. This would cause untold devastation across the world, and likely huge tsunamis on all coastlines. There are signs in the sun, moon, stars, and heavens. There is hail and fire, mingled with blood, thrown down to the earth, burning up a third of all trees and all green grass. A huge mountain burning with fire thrown into the ocean, causing destruction to a third of the creatures of the ocean, affecting one third of the world's coastlines with massive tsunamis. A great star called Wormwood falls from heaven, making a third of all water bitter and undrinkable, killing many who drink from it. The moon, the sun and the stars are darkened, and the days are shortened. It says at some point it will be dark by 12 o'clock midday. The bottomless pit is opened, and demonic locusts are released to sting and torment mankind. The fallen angel demons bound underground are released 
of an army 200 million strong to slay one third of mankind. Literal demonic creatures will be coming upon the earth, a vast horde to slay mankind. I have seen these creatures, these devils in my dreams, in their horrid forms. These are led by the strongest devils, the fallen angels of heaven from the days of old. They are clever, deceptive, highly manipulative, highly manipulative, and malevolently evil. They hate mankind because we are made in the image of God. I have seen that these beings mask themselves by pretending to be aliens supposedly from another planet. But this is a lie, and they come from underground, as they have been imprisoned from the days of old, when they caused grievous sins against the world and against God, resulting in the flood. They rebelled against God in heaven and were cast out. Their leader is Satan, who used to be called Lucifer. He is the devil, the wicked one, and the ruler of the world. He is the dragon and the serpent, who tempted mankind into sin in the Garden of Eden in the beginning. He and his fallen angels taught mankind sinful and abominable practices in the beginning, and creating giants from their offspring with females. Their terrible sins and corruption they wrought on the earth led God to destroy the whole earth except for Noah and his family in the flood. These beings are demons and are committed to evil and anything opposite of God. They have been leading mankind into rebellion against the true living God and his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and they have been doing this since the early days. These beings are our spiritual adversary spoken of in the Word. They will emerge as part of God's judgment upon mankind before they themselves are judged and go to the lake of fire. They will come upon the world during the tribulation which is about to begin. They can appear as angels of light and are skilled in deception, able to take different forms, I believe even human ones. They are devils, demons, horrible monsters and creatures beyond your wildest dreams. I have seen them many times in my dreams. I have felt their disgusting evil energy and have cast them out by the name of Jesus Christ and prayer. I believe they are coming upon the earth. As the Bible warns, these fallen angel demons will be released and shall come upon the earth to kill one third of mankind. I tell you these things because I know these things. I have seen these monsters in dreams. These beings may appear as aliens and claim to be benevolent, claiming to be our creators or some other lie like that, that they seeded this world or whatever. The reality is that these deceptive creatures are monsters who want to destroy us, to kill us, to eat us and subjugate us. However, fear not, be courageous, that if you trust in Jesus Christ and put your faith and hope in him always, you have power over demonic spirits and you shall overcome. We are told in the word that if we resist the devil, he will flee from us and that demonic spirits are subject to us, children of God who hold faith in Jesus Christ, and they are subject to us in the name of Jesus Christ. The word tells us at Romans 14, 10 to 12 and Philippians 2, 10 to 11, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the power of Jesus Christ. He is the Lord God Almighty and is one with his Father in the Holy Spirit. Many believers even doubt or disbelieve that Jesus is Lord. All shall learn that he is the Lord God Almighty, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. To deny Jesus is Lord, this is to deny an aspect of God in his integral nature as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To those who deny Jesus is God, they will never be able to grow as close to Jesus, for they deny him and his glory, his divinity. I had a dream about this as I was trying to plead to others to accept this truth. Know that it is Jesus Christ who commits all judgment. The Father does not. 
from God the Father all things were created through Jesus Christ, who is the Word of God, the bread of life. And the Father is in Jesus, and Jesus is in the Father. This is proven over and over in the scriptures, but many remain blinded to this truth, even among believers. Jesus is prophesied in Isaiah as mighty God, everlasting Father. Now, I tell you this because when you confess your faith in Jesus Christ with your mouth and believe that he is the Son of God who gave his life up to save us from our sins and rose from the dead after three days and lives forevermore, when you believe in this with your heart and confess this with your mouth and confess your sins to God and repent and turn away from your sins, you will receive the Holy Spirit of God within you. You are saved. You have the Holy Spirit within you. Jesus Christ is with us. And through Jesus, we have God the Father living inside of us. Jesus is called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Jesus promises he will be with us until the very end. These demonic beings are nothing before the power of Almighty God. They fear the Lord Jesus Christ. Confront all evil, equipped in the full armor of God, and pray for this earnestly and often. This is real spiritual armor and will help you if you are being spiritually attacked. It can help you to overcome sin and will certainly help you to oppose evil. To pray for the whole armor of God. This is at Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. You begin. Read this. Firstly, and pray for this often. You pray for the helmet of salvation. You pray for the breastplate of righteousness. You pray for the belt of truth, the truth of God gripping you tight. You pray that your feet are shod in the preparation of the gospel of peace, to walk in the peace of the Prince of Peace, our Lord Jesus. You pray to take up the shield of faith, which is your mighty shield and most important to protect you from the fiery darts of the wicked one. And you take up the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. This is your sword. And this has been shown to me in different ways. This is our sword against this enemy. Now, to use this sword, you need to use the word of God, which is the scripture. Do you know any scripture? Can you remember any lines of scripture? The word of God is our most important and vital weapon. Remember that this is Jesus Christ, who is the word of God. Trust in him. Um, here are some examples that I find easy to remember for me. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. This is from Psalm 91 which is a very important scripture to read. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. There is the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? Psalm 23, you can read the whole thing. But yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. There are more, find ones that you like. But I have received dreams showing me that this is the most powerful thing that you can do in a time of difficulty like that or opposing true evil is to recite the scripture, which is the word of God, and Jesus Christ will battle for you on your behalf. I know this to be true. So, confront all evil in the name of Jesus Christ. I have done this many times against devils in my dreams. See my video on battling demons. To oppose evil most successfully, you must oppose it in the whole armor of God and fully abiding in and seeking Jesus Christ at all times. To be, to use the power of the Almighty through us as one against any evil, even massive demons, I have been shown these things. Fear not, 
trust in the Lord and oppose all evil in the name of Jesus Christ, using the word of God as scripture, the scripture as your sword. Pray and do not doubt. Keep seeking Jesus and never lose focus of Jesus or let the enemy intimidate you. You are a child of God and God is with you in his full nature as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. When you walk in your true authority as a child of God, you will overcome the enemy. Seek Jesus Christ in all things, especially in battles, trials and difficulty. Remember, Jesus has already overcome the world. If God is for you, who can be against you? To exercise the Lord's authority and the authority he has given us over demons, we must be pure and free from abiding in sin. For we cannot partake of the table of demons and also the table of God. If we abide in Jesus Christ and abide in his word, the scripture of the Holy Bible, the word of God, we will be fruitful to God and walk closer with him. To abide in Jesus is to abide in his peace and love. To walk after him bearing our cross of self-sacrifice in denying the temptations of the flesh, not sinning, and walking after the Spirit, always following the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the blessed Spirit of God. To abide in the love of God is to follow his commandments. His two primary commandments to us are to love God first and foremost with all of our hearts, souls, mind and strength, and to love all others as ourselves including our enemies, to love them and hope for their redemption and salvation. If we uphold these two commands, upon which all of the law and prophets rest, we uphold all of the law. We are to also follow the Ten Commands of God, to worship none before the Lord our God, to create or form no idols before God and do not worship them, to not take the Lord's name in vain, to honour and keep the Sabbath, and keep it holy, to honour our mother and fathers, to not murder, to not commit adultery, to not steal, to not bear false witness, and to not covet or desire after things of others. This leads to having envy and jealousy of what others have. We are told also to not commit homosexuality, not commit fornication, which is sex outside of marriage to not lie or deceive others, and to not commit adultery of the heart by lusting after people, other, lusting after other people who have partners, or if we have partners and are doing the same. We are to abstain from these things, seeking Jesus to overcome the power of sin in our lives. We are called into holiness as the church of Jesus Christ, and separation from the world and the wisdom and beliefs of the world which are not of God, and which leads to death. Now, we have all sinned. We will all make mistakes, but when we confess our faith in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, and the laws of God are written within our hearts. The Holy Spirit of God guides us, so we can overcome sin by the power of God within us, not of our own accord, for without God we are nothing. But when we seek God, with Him all things are possible. Though we are weak, his strength is made perfect in weakness. When Jesus came to the world from heaven, he led a life of no sin, overcoming all of the temptations of man and laying his life down willingly to take it up again. By his stripes and lashes, by the crown of thorns, by his nailed hands and feet, by his shed blood, it atoned for all of the sins of the whole world. He bore all sickness and infirmity upon himself, atoning for all sin and bearing it upon himself. By our faith in Jesus Christ and our repentance and turning away from our sins, we receive forgiveness and purification by the shed blood of Jesus, which washes us clean and purifies us. Only through our faith in Jesus Christ can we accept the gift of our beloved Messiah, and this gift is by the grace of God, and not of works, but the Lord desires us to be holy still. We must, he will not force us to have faith or to love him. We must choose faith in him as an individual decision, and our relationship with God, the creator of our souls and the creator of all things, is a personal one. 
If we do not come to faith in Jesus Christ and repent before we die, we have no forgiveness of its sins by the shed blood of our Lord, and we will die in our sins and go to the lake of fire, which is hell, and to be tormented forever and ever. Since the beginning, when mankind first rebelled against God, mankind has had a fallen sinful nature ever since. We are born into sin. We sin in this world in our lives. We all do. Sin is separation from God. Sin did not used to exist. We are not different in this regard. Sin separates us from God and goes against his word. He only commands us these things so that we may live. If we sin and ask for his forgiveness, he is good to forgive us, even many times. But if we continue to abide in sin, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but an expectation of fiery judgment. An unfruitful, an unfruitful branch cast out from the vine of Christ, gathered to be burned. The Lord tells us in De Deuteronomy 30, 15, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. I believe we should follow the commands of God. If we believe in God's only begotten Son, Lord Jesus Christ, who is also God and the Saviour and Messiah of mankind, then we will receive forgiveness of our sins by the shed blood of our Lord and everlasting life for our souls when we die. We will pass into paradise, heaven with our Father, and be with God and our true family, the children of God and body of Christ, forever. By our faith in Jesus Christ, we become children of God. There is only one Saviour and one name which we may receive salvation. That is Jesus Christ. He is the only way to the Father. All others do not have the truth. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and as I said, the only way to God the Father. Without your faith set on the only foundation, Jesus Christ, you do not have life for your soul. This is the truth. Believe in Jesus Christ, repent of your sins, and be saved. Being born again as a new creature, with new wineskins to hold the new spirit, receiving the Holy Spirit of God within your body, which becomes the temple of God, Having our old man and woman focused on sin and worldly things firmly nailed to the cross as we walk forward as children of God united in Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, who is one with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. We are to not sin and seek Jesus Christ in all things and walk according to him and his ways, following his teachings and commands and the example he set for us as he walked on the earth. We are told not to fear man or death in this world, but fear God, who is the only one who can condemn our souls to hell. We should always fear God, because this is the beginning of wisdom and is a fountain of life. When we fear him, we will obey him and be humble before him, respecting his awesome might and power. Fear of God is a blessing and is vital to hold and keep forever. It is not like fear of the world, which is torment, and of the devil, but fear of God is life-giving and vital. I certainly fear God. He is the Almighty. We will all be judged by Jesus Christ and appear before his judgment seat to give account of our lives at judgment. And he is about to judge this world and pour out his incredible wrath on the wicked and ungodly those who do not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Know that Jesus loves each and every single soul on earth so deeply and so richly we cannot understand. He literally died to save each and every one of our souls, even while we were still sinners. But he will not force us to have faith in him. We must do this of our own choosing. He has given us his word and the truth. The word tells us, Jesus is long-suffering and does not want for any of us to perish and go to hell, but that they may believe in him and receive the precious gift of his sacrifice, to accept his gift to save us by the very blood of his life, receiving forgiveness of sins and eternal life. 
Jesus asks so little of us, and what he asks of us is only so that we can be close to him, to be close to God, and to not be in sin, which causes separation and rebellion from God. His commands are for our best, and keep us on the narrow path to life, and keep us away from the broad path that leads to destruction that many will take in this world. He loves us all so much and wants us to turn to him and be saved. God is holy, pure. He is the truth, the way and the life. He does not lie. He is righteous. His judgments are just and true. He is love. He is merciful and forgiving, long-suffering and kind to all. However, God's creation has entered and persisted in gross rebellion against God, and this world is heading further to death darkness and decay. Jesus is the light of this world, and he came to redeem his creation from sin and death into the glory of God for all eternity. We must have faith in Jesus Christ to live. We must spread the gospel of Jesus Christ so that others can be saved by their faith in Jesus and their repentance and turning away from sin and receive forgiveness by salvation. Receive forgiveness and salvation by the shed blood of our beloved Lord and Saviour, to have their souls saved from hell, the lake of fire. I tell you with all of my being, this is the truth. Jesus Christ is God. He is one with his Father and the Holy Spirit. God is about to judge this world before he returns to reign as King. Jesus shall no longer hold his judgment back from the world. The United States shall be judged. The world shall be judged. The Lord has a controversy with all nations and their armies. The United States was once a proud Christian nation serving God, but have wholeheartedly rejected him. They likely represent spiritually and physically Babylon in the Bible, which shall be destroyed by fire in one hour and swept under the waves and split apart by a great earthquake. One hour may not be exactly one hour, as this can differ in the Bible, but I have dreamed of the US being hit by a nuclear weapon and Russia and Asian troops invading and conquering the country. This second earthquake to occur, as spoken in the word, is greater than even the first worldwide earthquake that occurs during the sixth seal of the tribulation. In this second earthquake, all of the cities of the nations are destroyed. Babylon is uh, specifically spoken of to meet its destruction as other nations of the beast kingdom turn on her to bring the judgment of God for her filthiness and fornication as the mother of harlots. The Lord tells us when his servants turn from him, those who knew the word and turned from God receive more punishment than those who did not. For the once Christian nation to have rejected God in so many perverse ways, for many to be exporting so much filth, also in terms of a false gospel of Jesus Christ, judgment is coming to this nation. By and large, she will not repent, and judgment is imminent. It will be so shocking and severe, we have never seen anything like it. Judgment is coming to all nations. To those who truly believe in Jesus Christ and are not abiding in sin and the worldly things, we are not appointed to wrath. There are also more judgments of God upon the beast and the kingdom of the beast and those who accept the mark of the beast. At the end of the great tribulation, which shall be between three and a half to seven years, as the days will be shortened or no flesh would survive, the Lord Jesus Christ shall return with his holy saints riding on horses to do battle against the beast, the dragon and false prophet and kings and armies of the earth at Armageddon. Our Lord and the brethren, the saints of God who hold the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ shall prevail and the Lord will reign on earth as Lord and King. All those who believe in Jesus shall be gathered to him as he brings down the city, New Jerusalem from heaven. All of the dead shall be judged. Those who had faith in Jesus Christ and kept their faith unto their deaths shall be resurrected into new spiritual bodies to live with God forever. 
those who did not come to faith and died in their sins, those who are not written in the book of life, they shall go to the resurrection of death, which is eternal torment in the lake of fire. There shall be a new heaven and a new earth, and the old will pass away. Now, you know the basics of what the word of God tells us is coming. You can watch my videos for more detailed explanations, but very shortly we are going to have world war, economic collapse, famine, earthquakes, tsunamis, nuclear strikes, great tribulation, world government ruled by the antichrist beast, a false messiah whose number is 666, a very likely false new world order satanic merging of the religions, denying the truth of Jesus Christ that he is the only savior, false prophets, false Christs, lawlessness, the revealing of the demonic fallen angels who could pretend to be aliens, potentially benevolent, but are demonic monsters with a huge army of demons to kill one third of mankind, stars falling from heaven, the mark of the beast, two worldwide earthquakes, fire, poison water, scorching sun, pestilences and plagues, extreme evil. The days in which we live are likened to the days of Noah, before the earth was flooded to destroy the wickedness. This tribulation is the greatest that shall ever be on the earth, as is warned by Jesus Christ. Our society is about to crumble and change in ways most could never imagine. This is God's judgment upon the world. I have told you what is coming. I have no doubt. We are absolutely on the verge of these times. So I am warning you. I am giving you this information if you do not know this already. The Lord's word shall be fulfilled. Every single word. I am sounding the trumpet. I am sounding the alarm. I am bringing you the truth. I know this may be difficult for you to hear or difficult for you to understand or believe all of these things. But I tell you, they are true and they shall come to pass. You know the basics. You know what is coming. You know how to save your soul by faith in Jesus Christ and repenting and turning from sin. You know the danger of the mark of the beast. You know how to oppose evil in the name of Jesus Christ and that his word is our mighty sword. You know to pray for the whole armor of God. You know who Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, and the basics of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and salvation in his name by faith in him, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins by his shed blood. You know the true nature of Jesus Christ, the true nature of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They are one. You know what commandments to follow, how to purify yourself from sin and walk after God, to abide in him and his word, staying in his love by keeping his commandments. You know who our true enemy is, Satan, the fallen angel, and his other fallen angel demonic brethren. We have been warned about them in the Bible and in the book of Enoch, and they shall be coming upon the earth. You know of the resurrection, and that if you find and keep faith in Jesus Christ, and do not deny his name, even if you die, you shall live forevermore with God and your true family. You know that the judgment of God is upon the world, on the United States and all nations. You know this is soon to begin. You know that it is only through Jesus Christ can we have security coming into these times, as God has promised to deliver and guide us. And even if we die, as there will be great persecution against believers in Jesus Christ, our flesh may die, but our souls will live forever in God having attained salvation by our faith in Jesus Christ and forgiveness of our sins through our repentance by the precious shed blood of our Lord. You know many things, and you can teach and spread the truth to others. You have been equipped with some important basics of the word of God and my imminent warnings to you of what is coming. I give you this information because I absolutely believe that this is the truth and all will realize this at some point. When these events begin, please remember what I have told you, what you have learned. If you have never heard these things before, remember and call out to the Lord. Call out to him today and pray to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray for the truth and the word of God to be revealed to you. 
We are told in the word, if we seek, we will find. If we ask, we will receive. And if we knock, it will be opened. Be persistent in your prayers. Prayer has incredible power. Pray to the Lord every day. Seek him often. Pray for others. Pray for the nations. I have told you what I believe is vital information, and I have put all of my efforts into this to tell you these things. What else can I tell you? The Lord Jesus Christ is soon coming to take his bride from the earth. This is those true believers in Jesus Christ who have purified themselves from sin, abide in Jesus and his word, are holy, righteous, and in white garments. They are awaiting their bridegroom, Lord Jesus Christ, earnestly, with their lamps full of oil, and are not abiding in the worldly things. They have answered the call to the marriage of the Lamb, and very soon the Lord shall take his bride from the earth. Those believers who are not yet ready to be the bride, and are lukewarm or are abiding in sin and not in Jesus and his word, will not be taken as the bride and will go into the great tribulation. We do not know when the Lord is coming for the bride, but the bride is earnestly awaiting their bridegroom and is awaiting in love and is ready to go. Those who are not taken, despair not, fear not, for many shall be purified from the great tribulation and wash their robes white in the blood of the Lamb, appearing before the throne of God, a multitude from every tongue and nation. This is, I believe, a great rapture of the church of those who were purified through the tribulation and taken by the Lord after or during the first great earthquake, the sixth seal, described at Revelation 7.14. The final rapture or gathering of the church is those who are alive and remain when Jesus returns on the earth to reign as king, described in Matthew 24:29-31. And this is my interpretation of the word. You're welcome to have your own, uh, but I do believe these things. We know in the word that many saints will be beheaded for their faith in Jesus and refusing to worship the beast or receive the mark of the beast. We know the beast will make war against the saints and overcome them, and many will be martyred for their faith in Jesus Christ in these coming days. Hold fast to your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ through tribulation and unto your death, and you will receive the crown of life. This is the truth of God's word. I believe only the bride will be taken before the great tribulation or early into the tribulation, to be kept from the hour of trial that shall come upon the whole world, I also believe, personally, that some of them may return to the earth to do the Lord's will. This is not something I have found directly supported by Scripture, but from other prophetic sources from the brethren. I believe it is possible. In any case, whether taken or not taken, raptured or not raptured, our task is clear, to abide in Jesus Christ, who is one with God the Father and the Holy Spirit, to abide in his word, his love, his commands, doing his will on the earth and bringing others in darkness to the truth, to salvation in Jesus Christ. There is so much to do on the earth as the Lord wants to save as many as possible, especially of his church, which he calls strongly into repentance in the first three chapters of the Revelation. And he does not want any to perish, he would rather the wicked turn from their ways and be saved, and does not take pleasure at their destruction. Many believe that all who believe in Jesus Christ will be raptured or taken to heaven before the tribulation. This is not true. Only the righteous bride of Christ in white garments representing their spiritual walk with Christ shall be. Only those virgins in the parable of the bride who had oil in their lamps and were ready and awaiting the bridegroom were taken. Those who did not have the oil in their lamps, representing their spiritual readiness and purification, were not taken and were shut out. We are warned many different times in the word that not all believers are true believers in Jesus Christ. I'm not judging you or saying you are anything. I'm not judging or saying you are one way or the other. Uh, that only the Lord knows that. But we are just warned in the word, uh, Matthew seven twenty one to 23, Lord, Lord, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, and appears before me saying, we cast out demons in your name. 
I did such great works in your name. And the Lord says that he never knew you and depart from him, worker of lawlessness. So that is speaking of many Christians, many people who believe in Jesus Christ. So the Lord calls the church into repentance. So we must not take our relationship with God for granted. We must repent often. We must seek him often and try to abide in his word. We will sin and we will fail. We are still flesh, but through the Lord and his Holy Spirit, we can overcome sin and we can be close to him and be the true bride who is ready and waiting for the Lord. Many shall be redeemed through the tribulation and I believe taken in several raptures. Let us look to purifying ourselves from sin. Abiding in our Lord Jesus Christ, who is one with God the Father and the Holy Spirit, and abiding in his word. Let us not abide in the fleshly, short-term, hollow, sinful pleasures of the world, but seek after the real spiritual truth, the bread of life, and walk after the Spirit in joy, eagerly seeking our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthening our faith and loving God and all others as ourselves awaiting the return of our beloved bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ. The bride of Christ represents his true church, separated from the world to him alone. The Lord is coming very soon. I believe this strongly. No matter what, if we are taken or not, so be it. Let the Lord decide. Let us be ready and hold fast to our faith either way with our lamps full of oil and awaiting Jesus earnestly. Let us resolve now in this moment to do the Lord's will unto our deaths, no matter what, serving him and not ourselves, and seeking to save our brothers and sisters in darkness and redeem them to salvation by the way, the truth and the life of our holy Lord and God, Jesus Christ, who is one with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. You may find it important to store extra several months of long life water and food. White rice and lentils in buckets or drums and drinking water in drums or tanks is a good option. Some durable outdoor clothing, including waterproof clothing and durable, comfortable boots, a means of protection, some basic survival equipment to give you a level of self-sufficiency in a time of emergency and difficulty which will soon be upon us. You can find some links to my PDF survival documents and videos below in the video description. Above all, trust in Jesus Christ for your provision, for your food and water. Making sensible physical preparations, I believe, is wise, given the warnings the Lord has given us in his word. But above all, your spiritual preparation by your faith in Jesus Christ and strengthening your faith in him is most vital. Trust in the Lord for your clothing, food and water, where to go, what to do, if you should flee, if you should stay, if you should fight, how you should fight, in opposing evil, in dangerous situations, through all difficulty and trials, in peace and in turmoil. Seek him first and foremost. When you seek Jesus, you are seeking God the Father and the Holy Spirit. They are one and Jesus is in the Father And the Father is in Jesus, as he tells us. Pray to God the Father in Jesus' name. Pray to Jesus. Believe what you will ask. Believe that what you ask for, you will receive. Pray persistently. Pray every day. Jesus is our Father. We have one Father and one Lord, not two Lords, one King one Savior, one God, one Lord God Almighty. Believe in the promises of God and do not doubt. Only believe and be courageous and strong. Do not fear. Do not be anxious or worry. Believe in the promise of the Lord's salvation and that you shall live even if you die. Through all difficulties, seek Jesus and his grace. Overcome all sin by focus on Jesus and in the power and might of his name, not your own. Pray and seek him constantly. Know that God is with us, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
is within us who truly believe and follow the Lord. Believe in this and know this. Walk in the character of Jesus Christ. Stay in submission and humility to Him. Fear God always and forever. My beloved brothers and sisters, I love you so much. I know who I am now. Christopher, 27-year-old man, is not the full truth of who I am. I have witnessed my soul and know above all, I am spirit and desire to go home back to my Father, the everlasting living God. We are all spirit, but we are abiding in vessels of flesh. We all came from God. We must walk the narrow path of spirit to reunite with and grow with God and come out from this sinful and corrupted world, which is wicked and evil, is full of lies and deception and ruled by Satan and is heading towards decay, death, destruction, lawlessness and the judgment of God upon the nations, the ungodly and wicked. I thank you so much, my brothers and sisters, my friends and family for hearing me. You know the truth. You know what I have spoken to you. Remember what I have spoken to you. Believe in its truth. I do. Absolutely. I have tried to bring this to you. Trust in Jesus Christ in all things. Confess your faith in him. Repent and turn from sin and be saved. Bring others to salvation. Lead them to the truth. Judgment is here. Seek God. Fear God. Love him. Submit to him in all of your ways. Abide in him and you shall surely live. Chaos and difficulty is soon to begin. Please remember my words and believe what I have told you. When these times are upon you, remember what I have told you. Remember the truth of the word. Remember Jesus Christ. I hope dearly to see you all in heaven for eternity, my beloved brothers and sisters, my friends and family. Please share this with whomever you feel led. May you be blessed and your families in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. May the love and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Your brother. Christopher.